Go with me to the book of Psalms 103. Psalms 103, and we're going to begin reading at the seventh verse, just five or six verses there, and I won't be before you long. Um, but, you know, the time in which we're living in, we need more than a feeling. Come on, all that good shouting and dancing and tambourine playing. Amen. Come on. Oh, we thank God for Sister Kimberly. Amen. And the, and the tambourine players. Amen. We tried to get enough, Sister Kimberly, so y'all don't have to pass them around. Amen. But after all that good shouting and, and, and dancing, we have to know the God in which we serve. Because you are, you are experiencing, amen, a devil who is not playing. Amen. And when it's just you and him, come on, in the midnight hour, when it's just you and him, during the middle of your trial and temptation, you need more than a drum beat. Come on, you need more than a drum beat and you need more. Amen. You have to know the God in whom you serve. So last week we talked about, you know, understanding and remembering his covenant. You have to know what he said about you. When the enemy says you're not going to make it, you have to come back with the word of God. Come on. And you have to stand on that word. Amen. And you have to keep confessing that word, not based on how you feel. I wish I had a witness in the house. Amen. Not based on how you feel. Amen. If I did what based on how I feel, I wouldn't even be here today. Amen. But I'm standing here by the strength of God. Amen. And I'm in the land of the living because God has spared my life. That's not a cliche. I'm not borrowing from your testimony. I have my own. Amen. God has spared my life. And so God, he takes the time to instruct us. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. Amen. That they will instruct you, that they will teach you, that you would know my way. So you have to notice this church of God and Christ folk. Amen. You have to have more than a shout and a dance. Come on. You have to have the word hidden in your heart that you might not sin against God. Amen. So the, the message on today, as we pick up from last week, is in which God, his ways, according to Isaiah, his ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. But according to Deuteronomy 29 and 29, notice this, those things which he have revealed unto us, amen, they belong unto us. So the more we seek God and we seek his word, he reveals what he desires to do for us. You can be ignorant in church. Come on, you can die in church not knowing the will of God. So, but when you take time, amen, and we're going to begin to read, amen, at the seventh verse, amen, what God did with the children of Israel, amen, when they were under captivity and when they moved through the wilderness, Amen. What he did for them. What does it say in Psalms 103, verse 7? What does it say? He made known his ways. Now, notice this. God desires to make you know what he's doing. Come on. Everything ain't a secret. He desires for you to know. He made what? Known his ways. He made known his ways to who? Unto Moses. Unto Moses, who then, amen, shared that, amen, with the people. And they saw what the next part of the verse says. They saw or experienced his acts. So he made known his ways, amen, to Moses. And what? His acts unto the children of Israel. Amen. So God wants you to experience his touch. He wants you to experience that when, amen, you came to a dead end, amen, you thought that it was your end and God opened up the Red Sea and said, I have more for you to do. So you can experience the acts of God in your own life. After he has made known his ways, then he wants to demonstrate it in your presence. Lord, you have told us that you are a healer. Now I need to experience it. 
Lord, you said you are my provider and my bank account is showing something that I don't need to share with anybody else. I need you to make a way. Come on, we have to have experience with God. The things that our, our forefathers testified about, amen, ought to become something that we ourselves experience. I don't want to just say, amen, what Mother Rose Tyler said back in the day. I want to experience it. I want to, I heard Sister Kimberly say uh, time and again, amen, I heard the older saints say, but now I've experienced it. God wants you to come to a place where you can experience his acts. He wants you to come to a place, amen, where can't nobody tell you. Amen. No Jehovah Witness, no Buddhist, amen, no Confucius, nobody coming to your door. No, God has been too good to me. You can't tell me. My God lives. I don't know where your God is, but my God was raised, amen, from the dead. And because he lives, I live also. Amen. So God wants to make known his ways unto us and then he wants us to experience his acts what else does it say the lord is merciful uh -huh. and gracious uh -huh. slow to anger uh -huh. and, plenteous and plenteous in mercy see see we are at odds with god amen because someone has misrepresented him to us come on you 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 were brought up amen in an environment and lord knows Amen. The former generation, we had it rough. Amen. All we knew of God was a belt and a switch. Amen. Y'all ain't going to. Who you scared of? But say amen. Ain't no. Y'all scared now. Y'all don't want to say nothing. Like somebody going to get a switch and whoop you now. Y'all like, ooh. But come on, the former generation, you didn't even look the wrong way. You didn't even think the wrong thing. Because they would beat you for just thinking it. And you say, I didn't say nothing, but you thought it. Oh, I know I'm telling. Look, I got a reason to praise the Lord. Because he brought me out. He, he delivered me. Oh, my goodness. If anyone's been delivered, amen, from our a growing up years, amen, you, are, you have a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But it, it is those times that has formed us and made us who we are. I believe Sister Johnson said that, amen, in the service. And unfortunately, we have become too easy on this generation. And as a result, and notice this, they have become disrespectful. Come on, they won't even speak. Come on, I know I'm telling the truth. What you give them, they felt like you should have did it a year ago. So you were late. Entitlement, that's right. Amen. So God has a way of bringing us to a place, amen, where we understand who he is and we know him for ourselves. But that next verse, notice this, it talks about, amen, the mercy of God. Now, if you just skip over to Psalm 67, verse 2, amen, it says that, or let's, let's start at verse 1. It says, God be merciful to us. And it says, and bless us. And cause your face to shine upon us. Now there's a lot in those verses that I won't get to. But amen. When you understand that. Amen. You need the mercy of God. You will begin to decree and declare. Amen. Lord I'm walking in your goodness and your mercy. Matter of fact the psalmist said. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. What? All the days of my life so psalm 67 and 1 it says god be merciful unto us and bless us and cause your face to shine upon us now what does the second verse say elder cory that thy way may be known so be merciful unto us 
enough time, amen, that we may come to know your ways. And what I want to reiterate to you at this point is that we don't know the ways of God. This is why we talked about knowing his covenant on last week, because we feel like God is angry with us. Oh, it got quiet. But when you understand, amen, who God is, you understand that God is angry, but his anger he put on his own son that he might redeem us. So, so his anger did exist. Yes. And some people, amen, when you talk about how merciful God is, they get quiet because they, some people, they just want to hear about the judgment of God. The judgment of God does exist, but God is not a man willing that any of us should perish. That's the word. That's the word. So he gives us every ample opportunity to get ourselves right before him. Now that time and that season will run out if you don't do what he told you to do. It will run out. Amen. But give people a chance. Come on. We, we, we are quick to tell a person they go into hell. And if they don't do what they're supposed to, they are. But give them a chance. They ain't even got in the church good. And you tell them you're going to hell. Well, I ain't coming back to this church. Because if the God we serve is what you just demonstrated, I don't want to serve him. So God is a God of compassion and he's a God of mercy. Amen. And he gives us a chance. Amen. Think about your own life. Come on. You, you were 38 before you started doing or started thinking right. Start doing right. Come on. You know I'm telling the truth. You done done all that you could do. And now you done run out. That alcohol ain't is satisfying no more. Come on, fornicating ain't helping you no more. Come on, stealing and, and looting and, and all those things, you don't even desire to do it no more. But you did it long enough to where you ran out. Now you ain't got no teeth. You overweight. You, you feel like, well, I'm going to give God my best. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me today. Come on, I hear Bishop saying right now, amen, you wait till you ain't got nothing left to give your life to God. You ain't got teeth and you trying to smile. No, give your life to God when you are young and in your youth so that you can learn his ways. Don't wait till you have a cane. Don't wait till they have to roll you in here to say, God, I, give, I surrender my heart to you. He wants to teach you his ways, amen. And sometimes, notice this, for us to learn like Daniel did, amen, and, and, and his friends, amen, you have to start very young. You have to matriculate through the things of God and through the church, amen. All these things have a purpose. All these things have a place, amen, in our life. And so the ways of God in the way he deals with us, he wants us to know it. Let me jump to my subject. Just say the ways in dealings of God. Amen. He don't want to do anything. And I said this on last week. Amen. He does not operate outside of his covenant. He don't operate outside of his covenant. So the more you learn his word, amen, the, the more you learn his ways, you understand that even when something is, is, is working, amen, seemingly against you, is working for you. So your perspective of God is not that God hates me. Your perspective of God is that God loves me, amen, and I deserved much worse than this. Come on, what you're going through now, you deserve much worse than that. So the disciples in their lifetime, notice this, they counted it an honor. 
to suffer for the namesake of Jesus. And you don't see much of that anymore. Time we go through something, oh God, what did I do? No, some things he is getting you prepared, amen, for where he is going to take you next. And he can't do that in the shape you're in now. So you have to go through something. Some people don't want to hear that. Some people don't want to accept that. You have to go through something. Come on, you have to experience seasons that you don't want to experience. Come on, you have to work with people that you don't want to work with. You're going to have to say, forgive me, amen, even though you knew you were right. Because God is working himself in you. Notice this, that you may know his ways. So what does it say next? It says, he will not always what? The ninth verse, one, Psalms 103. He will not always chide, uh -huh. neither will he keep his anger forever. So he won't keep his anger forever. And what does the tenth verse say? He hath not dealt with us uh -huh. after our sins. So God does not deal with us. Notice this. Some, we, we, we really misrepresent God. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. And this is where we get it wrong. Let me, let me, let me share this with you. God remembers what man forgets. And what God remembers about man is his weakness, his infirmity. What God remembers about us is how, amen, weak and frail we are without him. So God remembers the thing that we have forgotten about ourselves. The longer we exist, the stronger we think we are. Come on, you're not 25 anymore. And because, amen, you are twice that age, sometimes you forgot, amen, how weak you are. You don't go to the gym, you don't exercise, you don't walk. So when you go to do something, you say, oh, I can do that, Lord Jesus. You forgot. But God, notice this, he remembers our frailty. But notice this, what we remember, he forgot. What we remember is what the enemy brings back to us. We remember, amen, what we did in eighth grade. We remember, amen, who mistreated us. We remember who did us wrong, and we're waiting for the opportunity to get them back. Those are the things that we remember, and notice this, God has forgotten it. In the next verse that we're going to read, amen, affirms that. Amen, because what, what, we, what we bring before God, amen, we're only, we're only rehearsing our past. And it's because we have accepted, amen, what the enemy has brought to us. But when the enemy, amen, reminds you of your past, you need to tell him about his future. You have to tell the enemy that you're already defeated. And his end is already written in the pages of life. So what does the next verse say? For as the heaven is high above the earth, uh -huh. so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Uh -huh, read. As far as the east is from the west, uh -huh. so far hath he removed our transgressions. So he has removed our transgressions from us. But what happens when you go to pray? What happens when you go to present yourself before God? Everything that went wrong, amen, the enemy will bring that right back to you. So you're tolling and you're tussling, amen, with the things that the enemy has reminded you of and God has forgotten about it. Amen. There are certain things, amen, that our children do. Some of it, not all of it, some of it we forgot. And I don't remember till they start acting strange. What's wrong with you? Why? Because hey, they, they, they fear, amen, that they're going to get in trouble for something that they knew that they had did wrong. 
And oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, our lives reflect the same thing. But the ways and dealings of God, he has not dealt with us according to our sins. He has not dealt with us according to who we were. If any man be in Christ, he is what? Amen. So what God sees about us is all through his son, Jesus. And anything else, amen, is useless. Anything else, amen, is not even worth it. I said on last Sunday, amen, he's looking at the blood. What are you looking at? He's looking at his son. What are you looking at? You looking at whether or not you paid your tithes. You looking at the fact that you haven't been to church or Sunday school in the last two months. You looking at, amen, yourself. And because you're doing that, amen, you, you think that God is dealing with you according to you. But when we put our faith in Jesus, notice this, there is no condemnation. When, when we put our faith in, in Jesus, amen, because you will never, ever be perfect, amen, before God, except through the blood of Jesus. When he sees you through the blood, amen, there is no greater perfection that you can achieve. But when you try to achieve something on yourself and when you try to be something of yourself, amen, God ain't thinking about you. That's not his way. That's not how he deals with you. So time, amen, you forget to do something. Oh, God, God, please don't punish me. That's not how God deals with us. Oh, I'm helping somebody. Time, that's, that's the enemy using, amen, your lack of understanding of who God is against you. That's, that's the enemy working against you because you don't know the ways and dealings of God. Do you not know, amen, when, when God gave Moses the commandments, amen, he told him, he said, the people have quickly turned out of the way. So in other words, what God was letting Moses know is he was letting him know, amen, that as quick as, amen, I have uh, established a way for you to understand me and to go in the way in which I have uh, called you to be in, you have went the other way. It ain't no different from when, amen, we turned 18. It ain't no different from when we were taught the right way. And as soon as we had the freedom to do what we wanted to do, guess what? We went our own way. And so, so, so what God was letting Moses know, he was letting him know, hey amen, you need to come out of this mount and get down to the people. Because they have turned away from everything that we have told them to do. Everything I told you to tell them to do, they have turned quickly out of the way. And as a result of that, notice this. Moses stood in the gap for the people and said, God, if you don't have mercy on them, what are they going to say about you? So God repented of the evil that he intended to do with them. What I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters on, the, on today, amen, is that God is not dealing with you, amen, how we deal with each other. God is not dealing with us, amen. We will hold something, amen, against each other, amen, until our death day, until our dying day. Come on. Something happened in 1974, and you still, amen, I'll never forget that. But God has forgotten it. So the things that we rehearse in our hearts, the things that we rehearse in our minds, amen, God ain't even dealing with us according to that. His mind ain't even on that. I'm looking at old Corey now, and sometimes I might be a little harsh and stare, and, but I ain't thinking about him like that. 
So what I'm telling you, amen, is sometimes the things that we go through, we feel like, amen, God is angry with us. But because he gave his son and because we put our trust in his son, the anger that he had towards us, amen, it rested on his son. That's why every one of us have a, a due diligence and a responsibility, amen, to give God every ounce of our praise, amen, because it should have been us. Hey man, I, I can remember countless times when Jonathan got beat, hey amen, and it should have been me. <laughs> hey amen. You ever had someone that stuck up for you? They took the blame for you? That's what Jesus did on our behalf. It should have been you. You deserve to be on that cross. You deserve to die. And so the, the very life that you have, amen, you ought to give it all back to God, amen, in praise and glory. You owe him that. You owe him that. Don't you know, amen, and I say this until you get tired of me saying it, four years ago, God could have got rid of everyone. And for a minute there, it felt like it was everyone. But he left us here, amen, because he don't deal with us, amen, in the way in which man, amen, feels like he deals with us. So when we learn the ways of God and we learn the dealings of God, amen, it, it, it builds in us an appreciation, amen, and a heart of worship. That because this should have been me. Come on, Sister Bell. Is Sister Bell here? Sister Bell, amen. That accident should have taken her out. Come on, that cancer should have destroyed you. Come on, that bullet had your name on it. But because God don't deal with us according to what we deserve, we're still here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Some people say, God, why do you keep sparing my life? They don't have no idea he has something for you to do. Right. Come on, he didn't, he didn't deliver you for you to go back to what you were doing. He delivered you to give you a chance to understand that he has something more for you to do. So don't get comfortable because he spared your life. David admits, according to uh, one commentary, that even in judgment, God has punished or he punished Israel less than they deserved. So even though, amen, we experience some things, amen, due to our rebellion, due to our open disobedience, God still didn't give us what we deserve. Isn't that something? Now, every other religion, amen, if you were able to study them, amen, you would have to make Amen. Uh, 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 you, you would have to get it right. Everything that you did. You would have to, amen, you would have to come correct on everything. But we don't have the ability within ourselves, amen, to correct everything that we did. People who don't understand the ways and dealings of God, they ask they, 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 they ask forgiveness for everything. Lord, when I was in second grade, <laughs> I took that eraser from my teacher. You know why? Because you don't understand the ways and dealings of God. There's no way that you can confess every single sin. So when we come to the Lord, notice this, we confess Jesus. Understand this. We confess Jesus. And Jesus' love 
covers a multitude. But now after we've come to Jesus, then the Holy Spirit will convict us of specific areas in our life that we need to get right. So there are a lot of people who don't understand God and they're trying, they're working hard. Many people in the church even, they're working so hard, amen, to get God's approval. They're working so hard, amen, for God to accept them. And that's not how God deals with us. That's not the ways of God. Yes, he's angry, amen, but he, he took that anger, amen, and he, in order to redeem us, he put it on his only begotten son. When I came to this understanding, amen, in my spiritual walk, it humbled me to the point where I said, Lord, I, 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 I'm only here because of your mercy. Yes. And I'm not saying that because I heard Mother Rigsby say it. But I come to the realization, amen, that really, amen, if it wasn't for God, Come on, I come to the reality, amen, that just because I'm black and 49 and looking good and, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. See, that's the pride of life, and that's what the enemy will put in your heart, amen, that I'm here because I need to be here. And anything that happens, amen, to you, amen, is because the world don't like you. Come on, this one don't care for you. No, but when you come to Christ, amen, and you come to understand his ways and dealings, amen, he will strip you of everything and you won't accuse him. Come on, because he said, if you love me, you will what? You will keep my commandments. But he also said, amen, take up your cross and follow me. So once you come to know the ways and dealings of God, amen, you have a cross to carry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a cross to carry. And, and that cross that you carry is going to separate you, amen, from your best friend. Come on, that cross that you carry is going to divide you and your spouse. Come on, that cross that you carry, amen, will force you to give up a career of 40 years because it's no longer in the will of God. The cross that you carry, amen, you will understand, amen, like Paul did, amen, that I would rather suffer with him. That I may what? I would rather, amen, endure uh, the afflictions, amen, for a season as Moses encountered, amen, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So the things that we go through, amen, once you learn the ways and dealings of God, amen, your perspective on your experience is totally different. Come on. Many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord he delivered him out of them all so when things come my way as they have more frequently especially since I've become pastor amen I become a man more acquainted with his ways because the enemy knows if he, can, if he can steal my faith, then my faith will affect your faith. So the ways in which God deals with us, amen, I, I, I come to realize, amen, this, this world is not my home. And God is continually preparing us. Ain't no one in a rush to go, amen, but he's continually preparing us you don't want to admit it but you're being prepared for your eternity now 
And, and the more you resist, amen, what he's trying to do in you is going to affect you in eternity. I don't have time to go into that. But amen, I want to, amen, move on from here. And I want you to understand, amen, in the book of Luke, I'm going to go to Matthew, the 18th chapter, very quickly. Matthew 18 and 24. Because how we deal with one another is how we feel like God is dealing with us. And in this instance, our inability to forgive one another affects, amen, our forgiveness with God. A lot of people don't want to accept that. There are many people that are dead and gone that you need to forgive. They don't exist anymore on earth in your life, but you need to release that person. Let them go. What does Matthew 18 and 24 say? And when he had begun to reckon, mm -hmm. one was brought unto him, mm -hmm. which owed him 10,000 talents. Amen. So Jesus has given an example, amen, of this individual who was owed something. And in this case, it says he was owed 10,000 talents. Read. But for as much as he had not to pay. But he did not have enough to pay. I want you to understand, amen, the reality of what God requires of us. You don't have enough to pay it. And the problem is some of us are working hard to act like we do have enough to pay. You will never have enough to pay God. So he said, what? Read but that. for as much as he had not to pay. He did not have enough to pay his what? His Lord commanded him to be sold uh -huh. and his wife uh -huh. and children uh -huh. and all that he had uh -huh. and payment to be made. Uh -huh. The servant therefore fell down. So he fell down and he worshiped him saying what? Lord, have patience with me. He said, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. And what? Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. So the Lord, amen, had compassion with him. The Lord had mercy on him. I have never dealt with so many people, amen, who, are, who don't realize how much compassion has been shared on their part. They forgot how much God forgave them. They forgot, amen, how God dealt with them when they were at their wit's end. When they needed food in their pantry, when they needed a job, when they needed their body healed. So what happened? What does it say? Was moved with compassion uh -huh. and loosed him. And, so, and loosed him and then what? And forgave him the debt. And so this is how God deals with us. He has forgiven our debt. He has loosed us and let us go. But now here's the clicker. When that person needed to forgive someone else, they acted brand new. Come on, they acted like the fresh prince or princess of Bel Air. They acted like they deserved, amen, everything that was done to them. If you only knew what you deserved. If you only knew that you were here because of God's mercy. And that cannot be said enough. So what does it say? What? But the same servant went out uh -huh. and found one of his fellow servants, uh -huh. which owed him a hundred pence. Uh -huh. And he laid hands on him. Now let's compare what he owed his Lord to what was owed him. One hundred pence compared to what? Ten thousand talents. There's nothing in comparison. 
So what? Which owed him a hundred pence, and he what? Laid hands on him uh -huh. and took him by the throat, uh -huh. saying, Pay me that thou owest. Uh -huh. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet uh -huh. and besought him, saying, uh -huh. Have patience with me, uh -huh. and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but what? But went and cast him into prison. Uh huh. Till he should pay the debt. Till he should pay the debt. What I'm telling you, amen, the way in which we deal with each other. Come on. The way in which we expect each other. That was 10 years ago. Let it go. Even the IRS has something called the Fresh Start program. They do. Some of y'all know about it. You ain't, you ain't got to be shy. Even the IRS, amen, says we are going to give you a fresh start. We know that you owed us $10,000, amen, but we're going to give you a fresh start. But now when somebody owes you $10,000, there ain't no fresh start. No, you're going to pay and you're going to pay with interest. Understand, amen, the meat of the message. Understand the revelation, amen, in which we deal with each other, but God doesn't deal with us that way. So he says, because you would not forgive that person, I'm not going to forgive you. That is the word. He says, because you withheld forgiveness, amen, from Sister Johnson, amen, don't, ain't no reason for you coming to me asking for forgiveness. So when you understand the ways and dealings of God, God didn't deal with me according to what, amen, I owed him. There's no way I could pay it. So we have to understand that with one another. You know that person can't pay you back. Don't even expect it. Bishop said if you can't give it to him, don't loan it to him. Amen. Because now you're looking at me cross-eyed, wondering where your payment is. You ain't going to get it. And you might as well accept that and move on. You'll live longer. Going to bed trying to figure out. Yeah. I'm going to let that go. But you understand the point. Amen. So what God will do, amen, he teaches us, amen, his ways. And when he brings us to the place Amen. Where we are now established on our feet. He expects the same thing of us. He expects us to show that same compassion to someone else. Else how if you're not a person's lifeline. Amen. They won't have the opportunity. Just like you didn't have the opportunity. Can't you think of a person in your life that had they not stuck with you. It could be a parent. It could be a spouse. It could be a child. It could be a co-worker. But had, even when you, you didn't have nothing, amen, to give them, you had nothing, amen, that they could rely on, but they said, I'm going to help you anyway. That's what the Lord did for us. But seemingly, we have forgotten. And because we have forgotten, amen, he has to remind us of the ways in which he deals with us. I'm going to bring this to a close. Amen. What does it say next? And so the, when his fellow servants uh -huh. saw what was done, uh -huh. they were very sorry uh -huh. and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Yes. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, mm -hmm. O thou wicked servant, mm -hmm. I forgave thee all that debt. I forgave you all of what you owed me. Read. Because you desired me. Mm -hmm. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant? Read. Even as I had pity on thee. Mm -hmm. And his Lord was wroth uh -huh. and delivered him into the to, to the tormentors. To, to, uh -huh, read. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. Amen. So when we come to the point, amen, where we realize that a person doesn't have the ability, amen, to give us, amen, back what we gave them. Amen. It reminds us that we, we were in a place, amen, and still are there, that we don't have everything that God required of us. And when you come to that place, your dealings with one another is different. 
your ways with one another is different. I don't even know why I'm going this way, but the Lord knows. Your dealings, amen, because we have a way in which we deal with God, but when we deal with one another, you wouldn't know that we were serving God. Come on. Now, you just was praising and worshiping, but now what just came out of your mouth towards me and the spirit in which it came? Keep your God. Amen. So that's not how God deals with us. And because he did, has not dealt with us that way and because his ways are different, amen, he expects the same. He expects the way I deal with, amen, brother Daryl, amen, would be different. Why? Because he saved me. Who am I? His ways towards me, amen, was not something that I could pay him back. So I don't even expect nothing from Daryl back. Daryl don't owe me nothing. I just want y'all to know that. <laughs> Daryl don't, I'm just using him as an example. But, but you would be surprised, amen, what's holding up your blessing is the way we deal with one another. It's our ways with one another. Come on, you can't talk to me now? I'm through fussing. But there are some things that, amen, we tend to overlook in our spiritual walk that prevents us. I mean, we can, we can shout and dance and we can call heaven down. But the way we deal with one another. Come on, you don't know until you're in an auxiliary meeting. You don't know till you come to choir practice. Oh, I know I'm telling. I know I'm telling the truth. But what God, he wants to mature his people. Come on, how can, you, how can you love God whom you haven't seen? That's what the scripture says. And your brother you see every day, amen, and you disregard them. You ignore them. You overlook them. It's not always intentional. Some people, amen, they take everything the wrong way. I didn't even see you. I didn't see you. If I saw you, I was thinking about something else. Salmon is on sale at Safeway. I was trying to get there. <laughs> okay. My time is up. But, but my brothers and sisters, it is, it is vitally important for you to understand, amen, that some of the things that prevent us from getting to where we need to be in God has everything to do of how we deal with one another. It's our ways with one another. And you would be surprised how a simple gesture, amen, of open up the door that you closed to someone that needed you or needs you. You'd be surprised that when you open that door back of what God will do for you. Look at your neighbor and tell them, let it go. Let it go. It's been 12 years. Let it go. That person is not worth it. Let it go. Why is this important? Because we're going to have communion next week. And we cannot break bread together. And we have anger in our heart towards one another. Come on, he's coming for a church without or say the whole scripture or any such thing. So, so, so what God is looking for is not that we all have the same clothes on. I'm speaking to the adjutants now. I'm speaking to 
everyone that wants to make sure that we look the part. But he wants to make sure, amen, that our hearts are unified. So when, when, when we come together, he says, confess your faults one to another. That what? That you may be healed. So our dealings with one another has to change. Our dealings with one another and our ways with one another has to change. And if we find ourselves, amen, in a posture of humility, amen, God is going to raise you up. He's going to bless you. He's going to strengthen you, and he's going to increase you. You can expect that. There's nothing holding you back when you've done everything that he's told you to do. So the ways and dealings of God, amen, we have to come to know that. We have to reacquaint our way ourself with his ways we're standing to our feet